As we worship today, uh, as we're talking about the, the sheep and the goats, uh, and I'm looking for some slides up here, and maybe, they're, uh, maybe they'll be up here in a second. You know, you might notice I'm wearing a, a, a shirt today and a tie, and my shirt is, um, well, let's see, uh, scarlet colored, no, not garnet. It's scarlet colored, and my tie is gray. I had wanted to wear something maize and blue, but uh, for those of you who know what uh, rivalry weekend is in college football, I lost a bet. And so originally, our Ready or Not sermon series was really to ask the question, are you a sheep or are you a goat? But with it being rivalry weekend, anybody watch some college football yesterday to see what was going on? Okay, so I got the right, the right group of people here. Uh, we, we thought we'd entitle it Sheep versus Goats to see which one's going to come out ahead. And uh, if you look kind of closely at the rivalry weekend words, uh, you might just see your favorite team's colors come up during the message here today. Today, as we talk about sheep versus goats, we have one of Jesus' most well-known stories, the story that he tells at the end of his ministry about the king who comes and who judges the sheep and the goats. And uh, that story is, uh, did I just black that out again? You know, they give me this, they tell me to handle it. Ah, there, well. Yeah, fear not. Ready or not. There we go. Ah, rivalry weekend. Okay, we're going to rewind the whole sermon. You'll have to listen to that again. No. (laughs) They're trying to teach me new tricks, so they put some power in my hand. I don't know how good it is to do so. But Jesus' words that engage us today are from a story that he tells at the end of his ministry, and maybe you've heard it before. And he begins that story with these words. And if you wish to follow along in your worship folder, there's a little insert in there with the words for our scripture reading from Matthew chapter 25. Or if you wish to follow along on your phone or your tablet, uh, we invite you to do so. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory with all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another As a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and give you something to eat, and thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of these, least of these, brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed. Go to the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels, for I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. And they also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? And he will reply, truly I tell you that whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go, over, go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. 
How many of you have heard that story before, portions thereof, where Jesus separates the sheep and the goats? And perhaps you've heard the phrase, one of the least of these. And as Jesus is talking about the different actions between the sheep and the goats, I want you to think about this question. Was it because of who they were that Jesus separated them, sheep versus goats? Or was it because of what they did? Think about that for a second. I'm going to let that just kind of work its way around in the background. But, you know, as I thought about the words that Jesus said and how he talked about the things that he saw that the sheep had done, the things that they had done to care for the least of these, I couldn't help but think about Prince of Peace and some of the ways that we see God in action here, Prince of Peace, through his people. And when Jesus said, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat, I thought about our food pantry. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. When he says, I was a stranger and you invited me in, I think about how in our ESOL classes, we invite in those who are learning a strange language. We not only help them to know what it means to live in America, but also what it means to be loved by somebody unconditionally because we care about them. And then that African children's choir that came to visit, the hospitality people extended I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited. I was in prison, and you didn't abandon me. When I think of those words and the way in which that fits who we are as God's people here at Prince of Peace, I think to myself, on what basis is it that God calls us either sheep or goats? On what basis is it that he makes us into his people? You notice that with each group, the sheep and the goats, for each one of those groups, they didn't know that they were serving or turning their back on Jesus. They had no sense of that being the case in real time. They simply either responded to a need or they went about their way. And then Jesus, with those words to the sheep, come to the kingdom prepared for you, you who are blessed, the inheritance for the righteous. And then the goats are sent away. Now, I had you thinking about that question. On what basis is it what makes someone a sheep or a goat? Is it what they, what they are or what they do? There's three points I want to draw out for you here today. First of all, I want this to be real crystal clear. In the eyes of the king, the key as he separates the sheep from the goats is their identity. It is who they are, what they are, and whose they are. Those who are the sheep, they belong to the king to begin with. They are claimed by him. And so on the basis of that, as the king sees those sheep as his own and calls them those, those words that he uses, righteous, that's a state of being. Blessed, that is a state of being, not something you do. Although if you are blessed, you can bless others. They are those who are called, who have something prepared for them in eternity, the blessings and the inheritance of their father. The eyes of the king are, first of all, looking at their identity. It was out of their identity, though, that the sheep and the goats then did something. Out of the identity of who we are as God's people, the application is for us, so we live and so we act. As God has blessed us, 
as God has given us all the resources that we need to be able to serve him, to bring him glory, to share his love, when we see those who are the least of these, we are moved like the good shepherd is or like the great king of heaven and earth is to be able to serve others. And so as Jesus identifies with those who are the least of these, he helps us to see that for us as the sheep, as those who respond to those needs, he's given us the heart that the king has. We have the same compassion that the good shepherd has. Just as Jesus said once when he saw a crowd of people and his disciples said, send them away. He said, I can't. They are like sheep without a shepherd. I have compassion on them. The king who calls the sheep his own plants that same love and compassion in the hearts of his people. And then finally, notice how the king identifies with those who are the least. The king is one of the least of these. And we know, as Jesus is speaking here, these words are about him, for he starts this story saying, this, when the Son of Man comes in all his glory, it will be like a king who separates, or a shepherd who separates his sheep from the goats, and the king will say, well, Jesus, the king of heaven and earth, he identifies, yes, absolutely, with those who are the least of these. Think of how he came. He who is the king of heaven and earth lowered himself and made himself humble as a human being coming in the form of a servant. He's born. He's laid in a manger, a feed trough. He's not put into a palace, even though he is the great king. How does he die? He sacrifices himself, allows himself to be taken and captured and executed. Jesus said, no one takes my life from me, but I lay it down only to take it up again. And there he suffered like a criminal on the cross, obedient even to the point of death. No greater humility, for he identifies with those who are the least of these, those who have the least reason to be in God's kingdom, those who have sinned, including you and me. Because he takes our sin upon himself at the cross. And then in the time in between his birth, his death and resurrection, he lived and walked with the humblest, the meekest, the neediest. Those who were outcasts he spent time with. Those who others rejected, he drew closer. Jesus certainly was one who identified with the least of these. He not only associated with them, but he became one of them so that he might redeem all people. So ready or not, here's the question. The question's this. If we've been claimed by the king, if we are his people, the sheep of his pasture, made to be his own, are you and I living out that relationship with the king that we have, fulfilling all that God has called us to be and doing all that God has called us to do, serving where God has put us to serve? Are we fulfilling, in a sense, our destiny for what we were created for, individually, corporately as God's people here at Prince of Peace? How would you answer that? Uh, I bet you that you and I would probably have to answer that as kind of a mixed bag. Well, on the one hand, there are many ways that we serve God through serving those who are the least of these. In other ways, we're constantly sharing God's peace and his love with people wherever we are. At the same time, there are times when we fail miserably to live up to that standard that God has for us. When I look into the mirror of God's law, including in hearing those words of Jesus, whatever you did for the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it unto me. And his words, whatever you did not do for the least of these, you did not do 
for me. I have to say that at times I kind of, I shudder a little bit. Am I a sheep or a goat? You know, take this for what it is. Online, I was looking for pictures of sheep and goats, and there's actually some genetic mutation. One animal that is part sheep, part goat, looks more like a goat. They call it a geep because it's a goat sheep. You know, really, that's us, isn't it? We're both sinner and saint in the same person. You and I, we're geep. I should have put a picture of the geep up here. (laughs) But it looks a lot more like a goat than a sheep. And the owner says he's raising it in a certain way so that he wants it to live more like a goat than a sheep. It's really weird and messed up, I think. But you and I, we are weird and messed up, are we not? Because there are times when we just, we just get it right. The Lord leads us. We're not even thinking about how we're serving others. And when we look back, we see that we have simply done God's work. He's used us in marvelous ways. And, and when we look back, we're just amazed. And there are other times when we could look and say, wow, was that an opportunity that God set right before me? Did I just turn my back on that? Did I forget what he had called me to do and to be? You know, sometimes when I think like that too much, it's good for us to look into the mirror. There are times I have to also remember that the tools of the evil one, the three tools that the evil one uses our discouragement and doubt and despair. So I don't want you to go away with too much, well, I don't want you to go away with discouragement or doubt or despair at all. I simply want you to realize, as I do, that we need God's help in all of this. And sometimes, though, to give you an example, when we're discouraged, we focus only on ourselves. We're kind of thinking about what's going on in our lives, and then we might not see the opportunities that our Heavenly Father, the King of Heaven, has set right before us, and we might walk right past those who are the least of these that we could be serving. At other times, when we doubt, we might feel like whatever we have to give or whatever we have to bring isn't much. And so we think, what type of difference could I make? There's so much injustice in this world, so much pain in this world, so many people who need help in this world. And we, with the discouragement and the doubt, we start to doubt that we can make a difference. Have you ever found yourself in that place where you just think, I I can't even start, so I won't even try? When the reality is, As God empowers us, as he enables us, as he gives us the resources to be able to serve him, he can use those resources in incredible ways, no matter how much or how little we've been given. You know, last week, if you were here, you heard Tom Zender, our treasurer, talk about some financial challenges that we've had. Someone said, well, you know, maybe we should go after the people who have the means to pull us out of this financial trench that we're kind of in for right now. The reality is, that's not what's needed as much as all of God's people being all in. Because you know what? When God's people are all in, bringing whatever resources that he's given for the use in his kingdom, he has a way of multiplying those things such that they are used in incredible ways. Remember Jesus feeding the 5,000? What did he have to work with? He said to his disciples, you give them something to eat, and all they could find is some little boy's lunch, five loaves of bread and two fish, and it was more than enough. Our God gives us more than enough to be able to make a difference in this world, to make a difference in the lives of others. And as he pours out his grace and his love upon us, we need not be discouraged or doubtful. We need not even be despairing when we see our own sins for the riches of his love drove Jesus to come for us to give himself as a sacrifice for our sins. And that brings me to think back to a scripture that we looked at a little bit last week. The scripture is from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And it's all about the grace of our Lord. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, the king of heaven, 
Yet for our sake, he became poor. So that through his poverty, we might become rich. Rich in his grace and his love, his forgiveness and his mercy, but also rich in being able to do the work that he's given us to do with the resources that he's given us to do it as we trust in him, the King of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen.